Hi, I'm Walter Isaacson and welcome to the Digital Revolution. We often think of history as something you have to go into the Wayback Machine and go way back in time in order to understand. But the good thing about the history of the Digital Revolution is it's happening now. We're all a part of it. Every time we use Facebook, every time we have an election, every time we use social media or the internet. But for the purposes of this course, we're going to go back in time to start, not back to where you could, I guess, start with the abacus, but go back to the 1830s and 1840s with Ada Lovelace. And so that's why we call the course The Digital Revolution from Ada to Zuckerberg. Now, you know, history of the digital revolution. Let's think about that for a second. What does that phrase mean? It seems like a pretty simple phrase, you know, history of the digital revolution. I get it. Well, let's parse it word by word. First of all, there's history. What does it mean, the history of something? You know, sometimes we think history is just one damn thing after another, you know, click, 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 1492 up to 1942 or something. In fact, history is about change, how change happens, why change happens, who causes change and who resists it, whether it's people or great forces of history causing change, and what are the backlashes to change? And what about that phrase digital, the digital revolution? We use digital all the time, but we don't have a pause to really think of what does digital mean? Well, digital means that it's like digits, zero, one, zero, zero, one, on, off, very discrete digital numbers as opposed to analog, which are waves, and there's sort of a lot in between the waves. It's sort of a smooth transition where digital is click, click, click. And it so happens that this revolution is called the digital revolution because it's based on the fact that every type of information can be encoded in binary digits, also known as bits. And those binary digits can be processed in circuits with a whole lot of on off switches. Now let's pause for a second and think what's digital, what's analog? Well, a slide rule, as you see, is analog. It slides, you know, I remember my dad used to use it and he would show how you could get into a in between numbers and everything else. Whereas an abacus is digital. Of course, the old fashioned clocks with the sweeping second hands, those are analog. You know, they sort of move slowly. Whereas a digital clock is, of course, digital. The interesting thing is our brain is sort of analog or mainly analog. It's not done with zeros and ones, ons and offs and click, click, clicks. It's done in sort of a wetware in which there are hormones and chemicals in which there are phases of things. And that's going to be pretty interesting because we sometimes talk about artificial intelligence, right? Well, if it's artificial intelligence of the digital sort, the type we would do on computers, then all the information has to be quoted in zeros and ones. And that's fundamentally different from sort of the analog digital mix that's our brain cells. So we're going to look at that and whether there's always going to be a fundamental difference between digital machine intelligence and human brain intelligence. And then there's that word revolution. We're talking about the history of the digital revolution. What does revolution mean? Well, a lot of your history professors will sort of disparage the notion of revolution. They'll say, there's never been any real revolutions. Everything evolves from what went before. Even the Renaissance was just an evolution, not a revolution from the Middle Ages. And certainly, you know, we look at the industrial revolution with the creation of the steam engine, the scientific revolution where Galileo and Newton come in and do things. Some people say those are revolutions. Other historians say, no, those just evolved from what went before. My favorite historian of science up at Harvard was a guy who wrote a book on the scientific revolution. His name was Stephen Shapin, and he had the most wonderful first sentence. It said, his first sentence read, there's no such thing as the digital revolution, scientific revolution. There's no such thing as a scientific revolution. And this is a book about it. And what he said was that those people who lived at the time of the scientific revolution were aware that they were living through something different, that things had changed, 
And I think that's true of the digital revolution as well. I grew up on Napoleon Avenue, not too far from Tulane. And in my basement, we soldered circuits together, me and my dad, he was an electrical engineer. And when suddenly things like personal computers and then the iPhone came out, I realized I was part of a really major shift in history that was gonna change not only our technology, but the way we live. So that's why I believe that the digital revolution was, is and was a true revolution. And that's what we're gonna be talking about now, the history of the digital revolution. It depends on three great inventions, the digital revolution does. The computer, the internet, and the microchip. We think of them as all being mushed together, as all being the one thing. But in the 1950s and 60s, these three inventions get invented totally separately. Computers are invented totally separately from the idea of a network, and they're invented separately from a transistor or a microchip. It's really when those three inventions come together, the computer, the internet, and the microchip, when they all combine in the 1970s and 80s, that you really get a digital revolution. One of the things about the revolution is that it was collaborative. With all due respect to Al Gore, we don't know who invented the internet or the microchip or the computer, although we'll study it in this class, because no one person, it wasn't like Edison, you know, doing a light bulb or Alexander Graham Bell doing a telephone. It wasn't a guy or a gal going to a garage or a garret and having a light bulb moment and inventing something. It was all invented by teams. And likewise, that's imprinted in the DNA of the digital revolution, a collaborative spirit where there are no gatekeepers. Anyone anywhere can produce things and share it with anyone else anywhere. It's a totally collaborative distributed process. And because of that, it's a connection between humans and machines that are really the strength of what the, the digital revolution is all about. Instead of artificial intelligence, I like to think of what we call augmented intelligence. In other words, what a machine and a computer can do together will always be stronger than what a machine can do alone or what a human can do alone. That's one of the themes of this course. I'm not one of these people who worries about artificial intelligence because I think the history of the digital revolution is about human interfaces with computers. Or to put it more simply, how do we connect with our computers in a nice, easygoing, seamless fashion? That's what's driven the digital revolution. And I also believe the digital revolution is driven by people who can connect the humanities to the sciences. People who can connect technology to liberal arts. That's what Steve Jobs, one of the subjects of one of my biographies, always did. Whenever he introduced a product, he ended with the slide of Technology Street meeting Liberal Arts Street. And as you see, he said, I always thought of myself, this is what he told me one day, as a humanities kid, but I also liked electronics. And then I read something that Edwin Land of Polaroid said about the importance of people who could stand at the intersection of the humanities and the sciences. And I decided that's what I wanted to do. One of the last product launches he did, I went out to see, and I saw that slide on the screen. It was for an iPad too that he was launching. And he said, when he put that slide on the screen, it's in Apple's DNA that technology alone is not enough. We believe that it's technology married with the liberal arts, married with the humanities, that yields the results that makes our hearts sing. So that's another theme of this course, which is it's not just about the technology, it's about connecting the technology to the humanities. The creativity of our digital age are those who connect the arts and the sciences. Leonardo da Vinci, his Vitruvian man, was a symbol of that. But from Leonardo da Vinci to Steve Jobs, the greatest innovators are those who believe that beauty matters. And when it comes to that, the next lecture is about one of those people who truly understands that beauty matters. The daughter of Lord Byron, Ada Lovelace, who is the beginning of our digital revolution.